Hello everyone, today we will talk about texturing and how you can make your texture look real, interesting and tell a story. Let's start. The first thing you need to keep in mind is the balance between the amount of details in the modeling itself and the amount of details in the texture. If my model is too complex and have a lot of parts connected together and there is much there is a lot of details in the model, this will make me go for more simple texture. And if my model is too simple, there is nothing really going on and it's not that interesting in the model, this will make me have to rely more on the texture to make my asset look interesting. I'm using this locker as example. As you see, it's too simple. Nothing really special about the modeling at all, just some boxes it's kind of basic modeling there is nothing to do much about uh, the model itself that's why i will try to do some more work on the texture to make this asset look interesting the second thing you should keep in mind is to not make your asset look too old or too new you don't want your asset to look like it just came out of the factory right now or it's too damaged like you can't use it anymore you want your asset to be somewhere in the middle, like like anything around us, just used. Some artists, when they store their texture, they could think when they add a lot of cracks and scratches and dirt and damage to the asset, this will make it look better. No, it's not about how much details you're adding, it's about the balance between everything you're doing. Now, let's talk about the part of how the texture can tell a story. Let's say that this locker is in a school and in the school there is students. Okay, so this could tell me that I can add some stickers on uh, the locker uh, that has been placed by students. Uh, okay, so now I know that I'm not gonna just use uh, metal. No, I will add some stickers on top and these stickers will have some variety of colors. So maybe I will make the base texture is some simple gray metal uh, okay that's number one that's the first thing I'm thinking of and um, let's keep in mind too that the locker owned by different students with their own different taste so when I'm looking at this the stickers I will have to try I'll have to look at some different type of stickers to match different tastes now let's look at the texture of the locker how's the metal could look like and how can I choose stickers and how to place it. Now let's look at the texture. I'm just choosing iron rough and some subtle details on top of it. And that's how it looks. Nothing special. I wanted to just add some contrast to it. That's it. Then I have to add some numbers with these. Now let's look at the stickers. So that's how the texture looks for uh, the locker. Okay, now let's look at the stickers. So we have this one. The first thing I like to do is try different type of stickers let's look what i have here these all uh, many stickers i tried to use to try at first to see if it will work fine together or not uh, then when i feel like okay i like this one i will just go and make a mask for it just a black and white mask and then apply it you should have variation in the scale between stickers you don't want all old stickers have the same size or the same rotation some of them will be colorful other will be just black and white you just need variation of everything yeah number one for the the first thing you should do about the sticker is just make base color that's how that's where the sticker and you could use a mask I sometimes I use it for height too and just a black mask and here where you're gonna add your black and white mask that's it base color uh, black mask and add fill use the mask you made for that sticker then second layer 
Sometimes I like to do some color variation for the sticker, like to make some parts of it looks like it's faded, not that intense. Like I want to just break the color a little bit, but for this one, just black and white, I think I will leave it as it is. Maybe I could play sometime with the roughness too and add some details for the roughness because I don't want the whole sticker to give me the same roughness. I want to break the roughness. If you play the close look here, you can tell there is some information for the roughness. It's not the whole sticker reflect the same. There is some information in the roughness. That's what I like to do for all stickers here. And for some of them, as I said, I like to give them some color variation. That's for Star Wars and just they have some roughness information for it. Let's look at this one. Chill out sticker. That's how the base color look. I choose the mask and dungeon height too to make it pop up just a little bit. Uh, be careful with the height. If you if you made it too high, this will make it look fake. Look here, I'm just using five for it. If you just left it as hundred as the default value, it's too much and it will make your texture look very fake. Yeah, the sticker is made of papers and paper has the thickness, but it's not that high. You want to be careful with it. Sometimes I don't give the whole the old sticker the same. Some of them are just given that. And some other stickers I feel like this could be printed on a more thicker type of paper. So I could just go more. Yeah, that's it. I will look at it from a distance. It will be looking like this. I think that's fine. So. If you look at the height, you would notice I sometimes I use di different type of heights. Let's go back to the base color. So we looked at the base color and the height for the chill out. Let's check this. This one is for saturation. I used the same layer to apply the levels for it to, to affect the base color just as I would do same. That's how it's looking. I just try to make some areas less saturated and I'm use paint layers to delete some information from that saturated layer that's how it looks and that's how it looks when I'm trying to give it different color variation I'm just playing with the saturation that's all here playing with the saturation let's take this one some more edits to yeah here I'm applying to paint some colors just to break the look a little bit. Uh, sometimes I don't do the same for everything. Like maybe this stickers, I did some different stuff about this one. Look at this one here, the one with Star Wars. I deleted some parts of the paper from the inside. But if you want to do this, be sure that you deleted um, some parts from the edges too, because usually the edges af be affected first before the center. And look at this one. It could have some scratches in the middle, but if it has scratches in the middle, this tells you that of course it has more scratches around the edges. Because that's when people start to take off that sticker, that's where when they will store it by grabbing this out. So the edges will be affected more. And this happened with every or many or maybe all type of textures. The edges always affect, be affected first before the center. If you're noticing like this type of uh, stickers here, uh, yeah, I, I think there is some variety, but um, some people could like some different things to blend them together. And if you looked at this one, uh, yeah, this one. I think it, it tells like this one has a totally different character, like some cartoony character and good vibes. So it's different. If we're looking at that texture, you would notice like this one it has to be a girl that like unicorns and she's cutie, queen of play of the playground. So this tells us that there is someone who who has different taste than this one and this one who likes the space. So that's, that's, this could give, a, give you an idea about how to think when you're trying to 
make your texture tell a story. I did all the stickers the same way, the, just the way I showed you. Here is, let's look at this one, just a base color here, black mask, add black mask, add fill using the mask I did, and this paint layer to delete some information. See, that's how it looks like, and that's when I use a brush, dirt brush, and you make it hard. As you could play with the flow, and you start to delete some information. That's it, using this paint layer. That's it, it's too easy. That's this one. Maybe I didn't add much information for this one. I think it's small and doesn't need more than this. So there's no rule to do same things for, for everything. No, it just... You have to try and see what looks better. And for this one, I use, I did it the same way. Base color, black mask, add fill with a black and white mask and paint to delete some information. It looks like, to look like this, someone messed with that sticker or tried to remove it. And I'm using levels here to just play with the intensity of the color just a little bit. So you can just use the texture as it is, you always have to play with it, with color, with roughness, with everything. And you can do all of it inside Savison Painter, you don't need to do you don't need to do it in different software. You could change the color here using this one. So here is the main layer for sticker, you could see. That's for the roughness. That's how it looks without roughness. It's all shiny. And that's when I add the roughness layer. It shines in different parts only. Here's the unicorn, the same way. Unicorn roughness. Can you notice if I didn't use roughness for it? That's it. That's all. I did the old stickers the same way. Here's some notes. In this video, I tried to give some basic rules about texturing and basic stuff you should keep in mind when you start your texturing. And I did some fast walkthrough texturing this locker asset. I hope you find it useful. Thank you for watching. See you next time.